two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Learn Together. I am your host, Kingmaker, and today I've got Bonsai here with me. He is our team's assistant manager. He has been on the show pre <laughs> He has been on the show previously, and today we're gonna be watching uh, Smokey on Lagoon Dragoon Kaisa. Um, I know that this game is a win already, um, and it's a little bit of a stomp, and I really don't like getting stomps just because it doesn't give a lot of information to be able so to let's, uh, pick out. So let's pause here. So I, want, I always want to look at um, I always want to look at the matchup here. Okay. So you have Kaisal Rakan going into Morgana at Caitlyn. Yep. So I imagine what they're going to be able to shove pretty hard because Kaisal is going to have uh, a wave to stand in front of because she can push harder than um, Caitlyn can. But if Morgana is using her pools properly, then mm. they will be able to push up against them because you have two ranged champions going up against a ranged in a melee. Yeah. But Rakan's really slippery and he um, he can kind of be that ranged ca champion as well. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I would definitely assume that uh, with like Caitlyn's first uh, first skill or her Q, her Piltover Peacemaker in the Morgana pool, they would definitely have a push advantage. Yeah, for sure. Let's see though. How this works? Let's go ahead and move the lane. So we got a Cathed Rain leveled up first. Yeah. So Kaisal's Kaisal's build path is always uh, is really interesting. You you're supposed to build pieces of items together and then upgrade your Q. And so you build your, your the pieces of your attack damage first, and then you build your second. E second. So yeah, that that is, uh, is really good. So what they want to do here is they want to keep Caitlyn up against uh, the tower out of the bush so that it takes longer for her to build her headshots. So that's why they're shoving the wave super hard, because then that way they have minions to stand behind. That is a good point. I, uh, I was thinking, I was like, wait, why are we shoving the wave so hard? But I did not actually think about that, so thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, you. so whenever you have champions that have uh, long-range skill shots, mm -hmm. uh, like a Blitzcrank pull, Morgana Q, uh, you always want to have minions to to stand in front of. Yeah, let's get so by sh by shoving the wave, you gain prio, which allows you to al allows it to make it uh, harder for the enemy to land their skill shots because they have a wave in front of you. Yeah. Ideally, what you can do here is you can also like poke them and then let the wave build up and then shove by the third wave yep. uh, under tower so that you have plenty of space to build up. But in this elo, like those characters aren't going to know what to do uh, when you have a Kaisal Rakan just pushing so quickly up against them. That's a really good point. So I was actually thinking um, that we were... I, I, I wasn't even thinking about the Morgana. I was thinking about Caitlyn. I was like, what are the minions going to do against Caitlyn? But duh, Morgana, the Q binding. So we go back for a BF yeah. sword. And in this scenario, yeah, so... I probably would have gotten yeah you got yeah BF you're supposed to get like BF sword then you get vampiric scepter or no you get BF sword executioner's calling vampiric scepter boots and then you that helps maximize your Q and then you build like dagger or something like that and stinger and recurve bow in order to finish Blade of the Ruined King, which then maxes the E, the third ability on her. Yep. See, I'm so actually... We'll see. Okay, Rakan goes over the wall with nobody to follow up. That's something that I would do. No, that's good. No, I mean, he had... The, they're playing... This Kaelin and Morgana are playing really passive, Yeah. and they're not timing their, their cooldowns to work together. I mean, it's so it's lucky. It's really hard to do. Like she's just able to get free damage off. Oh, that's a nice Yasuo ult. Oh yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, as Kaisal is playing her matchup very well. 
This Caitlin, is a dangerous spot to back. No, because you applied a bunch of pressure and you got kills. Okay. So even if they had vision, you ha- you're gonna walk. You're gonna try to walk up to a Kaisa that has a uh, oh, double buff. Yeah, double buff. Yeah. Good yeah. Um, it is. A, it is always a risky spot, but I mean, it depends on the situation. So that yeah. So she's building properly now. She's got her executioner her BF. She's gonna max out her Q first or upgrade her Q. See, that's and she's playing this. She's playing this matchup really well. Like when you have a long range champion like Caitlyn that has a slow attack speed, mm-hmm. you Kaisa uh, can play very up and close into her face, deal a lot of damage with her Q. Rakan can defend her and and immobilize Caitlyn. So you have two very mobile champs against Caitlyn, which is very favorable in this matchup. Okay, I'm weird. I guess I guess I'm weird because I build Blade of the Rune King first, and I go with the Emacs first. Okay. Uh, you can do that. Like, uh, there's there's two different ways to do it, but you 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 don't finish building an item at the same time that other people are. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're you're finishing your first item after you've upgraded one of your abilities. I would probably recommend people go the uh, Q upgrade first just because it's going to be probably probably more useful in like solo queue fights um whereas the yeah. e, e is going to be really when you're looking to play hyper aggressive okay what are we gonna do dragons down herald's up still i guess we just so this is uh this. is going by really quickly which is working in favor of the kaisal rakan uh, combo. Yeah. Caitlyn has high cooldowns. Morgana has high cooldowns. Um, and Kaisa really just needs, really just needs two spells and her auto attack to be able to engage on them. Like she either needs her Q and her and her uh, E or her first or third, um, or her first and second up in order to engage. Okay. That's interesting. Like I, uh, that's one thing that's hard for me to keep track of is like skill cooldown timers and think about how long they are. Uh, I think I guess I just play a little bit more from feeling as opposed to uh, calculation. I think it's important to know, to have an idea of what your enemy champion is doing. Right. So like you don't have to know exactly what the cooldown seconds are. Right. Like that. That's that's like next level type shit. Sure. But if Morgana throws her Q out, a general rule of thumb, or if like a Blitzcrank or anybody in general, like you've got about three seconds to make a move. Yes. Because nobody has less than a three second cooldown at level one in bot lane. Correct. Or at level, before level five at, in bot lane. So being cognizant of like, okay, Morgana threw her Q out. So now I have about three to five seconds that I can either move up or Rakan can jump in because she can't bind anybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a hundred percent sense. I just, uh, it's not one of those things I guess that actively goes off in my mind. That was good. Uh, yeah. So I'll play. Yeah, man, this game is going by so fast. It is. You're at 10 minutes. You've already taken two towers. Yeah. And, and it, it's like an 18 minute video. So I'm not exactly sure, uh, what, um, causes it to drag out maybe it's that late game macro play probably let's go ahead and skip four yeah so she finished building a blade of the ruin king she should have q and her first and third ability maxed out now She's super fed yeah all right so what do we do at this point I would, uh, I, for me... So at I, this point, you have, I mean, you're right now, you have Dragon coming up, but yeah. she did the right thing uh, by, you saw that immediately she took, as they took first tower on the bot lane, they rotated into mid to help Yasuo take his tower. He took that tower. Now that gives him enough time to start uh, getting ready for a Dragon. So here she popped Ward Revealer to reveal the the dragon oh, that's about to come up. They did it. And... That's what I was about to point out. They ran by what? it. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah. 
Uh, they, I just realized that they ran by it. So this right here, Scryer's, uh, Scryer's Bloom, whatever, uh, we're going to take this, and when we're running by it, we're going to pop it over in this direction, over towards Dragon Pit, and clear out all the wards that might be in there. Granted, they have Rift Herald Vision, um, but still free gold, free... Uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter if they have Vision on that side of the map right now. What they either need to do is they need to either have a deep ward dropped up uh, uh, by their blue, blue. or po have popped that Scryer's Bloom. And they, they, it may be that they didn't even pop it because they knew where she knew where everyone was, or they just, just fuck, like you said, they just ran by it. They didn't even do it. Yep. Definitely. But usually, like in these situations where you have such early game dominance, the other the enemy teams like trying to catch up. So the chances of them actually having vision on you Not at be this easy. point in a situation yeah. like this very unlikely. You're absolutely right. What are we going back for? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> a lot of a, a lot of what kaisa can do here is is going to revolve around what the enemy team is doing right so she always has to stay grouped together with somebody she always has to move with somebody be the adc she's really fed she could probably take caitlin on one-on-one -on -one, depending on how that morgana is she could probably take them one-on-one -on -one. let's see she waited here waited for the enemy team rakan blocked that to head that uh headshot from caitlin and she's just melting them down. Yes. That's ridiculous. Yeah, we um maybe maybe I play Kaisa wrong because I like being in the side lane one on one. And that's why I die. No, um Oh go ahead. I mean if it just depends on how strong Kaisa is. Like up against the Caitlyn, mm -hmm. um when she, if she has her E maxed out or her third ability maxed out, uh she'll be able to dodge one of those uh, or buy herself some time while Caitlyn's stacking that headshot. But her Q and her attack speed outmatch Caitlyn. And it's good that we have the Executioner's Call in here just because Mundo gets so tanky late game. Um, that Yeah, and that's just standard build yep. for... Well, pretty much all AD carries, but it's usually uh, the last item. For, for most AD carries, yeah, but especially for Kaisa because it's a cheap item that you, that builds the attack damage that you need to max out the Q. Yeah, that's a great, great positioning, I think, on her end, always staying with somebody, always moving around. If you saw this game and you didn't know that they were gold, what where would you place them? Uh, I'd probably say like platinum or emerald. Yeah, I think that's fair. High platinum, mid emerald. Yeah, a lot. A lot of what I have to ex like, or what I end up explaining to people is, it's not necessarily about how much you. Well, it is about how much you win, but it's it's numbers. It's um, mm -hmm. it's math. If you have a fifty five percent win rate, you're gonna climb. Um, you might lose a couple games, but you're gonna climb, and it's all comes down to how many games you're able to actually get in and play. Yeah, and Morgana, Morgana disconnected. Um, I would, uh, what I would say too is, and this is a conversation I was having with somebody uh, the other day. If you want to climb, play as a KDA player. Yes. And and by that you mean just make sure you stay alive and yeah, try not make to sure die. you stay alive. Make sure that you're aware of how many times you're dying, uh, how 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 many kills you're getting. Um, especially as an AD carry, you need to come into the mentality. You need to come into the game with the mentality that I'm going to carry the fuck out of this game. Mm. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to farm as much as possible. I'm going to make sure that my positioning is is the, is the best possible. I'm only going to follow into my team uh, and position myself in fights that I know we can win. Um, and I'm also going to be able. I'm also going to have a certain knowledge of. Uh, what the other champion can do and what I can do versus them. Gotcha. So she's coming around to kill this Lee Sin, who's super overextended right now. Yeah, that's a bad, bad positioning for him. Like, I don't see very many misplays in this whatsoever. Well, it's really hard to identify anything 
because the number one, the game is moving so fast, and number two, they're just snowballing. Yeah, that Morgana in lane, um, I think didn't time her spells properly and was just not not either not landing them. So in lane as Morgana, like usually what you want to do is uh, it was something I was talking with Barge about the other day is you max out your pool so that you can push uh, and you can sustain and heal and also you could use that to poke more so than your Q. And you throw your Q you, you or your, your binding, you want to pretty much guarantee that you're going to land it because you only get one shot and you want to do it on – in this matchup – that Morgana should have been trying to establish Bush dominance with the uh, Caitlyn and then uh, catch the Rakan before he either catch the Rakan or when the Rakan goes to jump in, bind the Kaisa. Because what a Rakan, most Rakans are usually going to do is they're either going to keep attacking or they're going to jump back yeah. to their ADC with their with his second ability to shield the ADC and then go start meleeing them or then go in an ult after they they hop in um but the these guys they they played super fast like the benefit of Kaisa is that she can shove almost as hard as Caitlyn Morgana can in this matchup with her Q um and Rakan was able to to apply pressure. I mean, it's kind of like having a blitzcrank in lane. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you, you that Caitlyn moves up any inch, Rakan's going to capitalize on it. Yep. Uh, and but and Morgana should have been there to to if the Rakan's going to jump in immediately, either throwing a binding out to try to catch him or throw a pool back to where he's going, so he, he can continue to like to poke and cause damage. It's so. Absolutely. The reason I paused here, um, a lot of people don't know really how Kaiza's passive actually works. Um, And Mm -hmm. it's not that you did anything wrong specifically, but now is the point where you want to cast your W when it's four stacked, um, because it will actually Mm -hmm. do a significant more amount of damage. So I think you hit it on maybe a two stack, which gave you four stacks into your passive, which another auto attack will trigger, but your W would actually yeah. proc more damage at that point. Just a small, small little macro thing that a lot of people. So do you're saying micro. you're saying auto, 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 W or auto, auto second ability, Q yeah. alt or you, alt and then Q. Preferably, if you can get three to four stacks like it is now, because each little flower underneath uh, Mundo is one stack. It's going to do significantly more damage when that W hits. Yep. Which, uh, that's how Kaisas delete people so fast in League of Legends. Yeah, I see. He barely did any damage with that follow up Q as he was running yep. away. That's just Mundo, too. New Mundo's fun to play with, fun to, not fun to play against. The build is really good, though. Build path is correct. Um, items are correct. A Solari charge. Once he gets Solari charge blade, I mean, look at how fast just, he's peeling that. Yeah, it just feels good when you get enough attack speed on Kaisa. I've uh, last time I played her, I played her the old uh, Runin's Hurricane build, and that was fun. Good positioning. That was a good use of her E or a third ability uh, to be able to maneuver herself through the fight and then come out behind them. Yep. Got to run all the way back. That's a good call to run back there. Tower's not going to die anytime soon. Let's see. We got our infinity edge now, so we're really going to hurt. It's a good thing that Yasuo shut Zed down. Oh yeah. Early because yeah, now she doesn't need to get um Zonias. Zonias. But also, I mean, in this ELO, like I can't imagine that Zed really having the best mechanics to be able to pick her out 
of the fights. You know, you play a game and you get crapped on by a good Zed. You're like, I'm going to go smurf or something and then try to play Zed. And you just do no damage. And I'm just like, what am I doing on this champion? Yeah, Zed is all mechanical. I mean, like, I was talking about this with stacks last night. Like, in between your games, like, go into practice mode and just set up target dummies yeah. for champions that are super, super mechanically uh, inclined. Inclined, yeah, that was nice. That was it's just god, that's nasty. Um, so like Lee Sin, Jace, Zed, uh, Rakan, it's all about positioning, timing, um, and you're just using the target dummies in order to land your skill shots. Yeah, I I, uh, I play about ten minutes a day with Lee Sin working on QQ uh, flash kick. Yeah, kick flash. Um, Yasuo as well, being able to know how to stack your your wind, your uh, tornadoes. The the crazy things that people can do on Yasuo, like the Keyblade, where you flash in after you press the. Um dash Q and you knock up multiple people from the flash and there's nothing they can do to react to it is just absolutely insane yeah some of the Yasuo plays that I've had on the top 5 series have just been absolutely insane so they overextended a little bit there I can't believe they were playing while they had their screen like that that's why I'm wondering if they were playing with their screen like that or if they were doing that while they were recording. I think that was while they were recording. Yeah, it'd have to be. Now I that I look back at it. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. Oh, that was it. Team ended. Okay. We're just going to black that part out on the uh, screen. So um, what did you think overall? I think they took advantage of the um, the fact that the their enemy bot lane that Caitlyn and Morgana were playing so uh, passive. Um, Caitlyn, when you're going up against Caitlyn, if Caitlyn doesn't have a Lulu or a Nami or I would say like an engaged tank yeah. sitting right next to her, um, you can just pretty much shove all day if if their support isn't positioning and and um poking while caitlin's farming caitlin takes a little while to build up caitlin's very team oriented um and her attack speed is isn't really that fast so this kaisa rakan again you have super mobile champions going up against a very immobile AD carry and a Morgana that quite frankly was was the was the factor in that lane losing yeah. so early um and you know great uh the couple times that I was able to catch it um anytime Caitlin went up to try to um auto attack the back line or land or Q recon just jumped right on top of her, uh, which is, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do as Rakan. You take advantage of uh, enemies not positioning themselves properly, and then you have Kaisa that can keep up with Rakan moving around so much. So, Do you think that would have been a it, different game if the Morgana had started Black Shield and <clears throat> and when, when Rakan went in for that initial knockup where he landed on two people? Do you think it would have been a different game? I think what it would have made it a different game is if Morgana, uh, instead of trying to focus so much on trying to land a binding, mm -hmm. um, pow or powered up her, her second ability first and used it to poke the Kai'Sa with it. Because Kai'Sa was pretty healthy during that lane phase the whole time. Like, I didn't see any point in time where um, Kaisa was low health or in danger of being pushed back. Uh, the Rakan kept her shielded, kept her healthy. Um, 
took advantage of the misposition by Caitlin. And I think I think what would have made that matchup a little different is it winning for the other side, I guess given the champions that they have is yeah, is having that Morgana be a little bit more aggressive and also um positioning. A lot of that was positioning. Those champions, um they're not very mobile. They, you know, if you catch a Morgana out of position, all she has is her Q and her spell shield. Mm. She's not a very fast champion in yeah. general. So, um, you know, if if you're not ready to land that, um, if you're not ready to engage, then you need to play back, and you just need to try to shove the wave uh, because you have a melee champion and a, like we said at the beginning, you have two range champions mm-hmm. going up against a melee and a range. And your the range has shorter. Kaisa has a shorter range with her autos uh, and with some of her spells than um, Caitlyn does. So Caitlyn should have just patient, been more patient. Mm-hmm. She should have uh, let Kaisa push uh, and then take advantage of when Kaisa recalls to try to move the wave, either freeze the wave or move the wave up a little bit more. And then wait for their jungler to come and provide ganks for them, yeah. uh, because that a lot of lot a lot of times when I'm going into solo queue and I either have to play support or AD carry, a lot of the cha- the champs that I pick, it's either a super safe pick, if I if I have first or second pick, or if I see the AD carry, I'm picking a counter, yes, yeah. like a straight up by the books counter. Uh, Kaisa is isn't necessarily a counter to Caitlyn on paper, but as you can see, if you play her aggressively enough, um, you can definitely out farm and, and push up on the Caitlyn and make it hard, okay. harder for her. And the Caitlyn in that situation should take advantage of the fact that she's sitting under turret and just play safe uh, and position herself to be able to take advantage of, uh, when the Rakan jumps in, throw a trap down. Um, there's just a lot of things that bot lane matchup, uh, the Caitlyn and Morgana did not do properly. I mean, we could sit there and list it. Um, so, um, real quick. So this person actually asked me, and I just remembered because I have a terrible memory. Um, they, one of their big fears is not being on Kaisa in like a ranked game, and they really don't like Ezreal. Um, who do you recommend if they can't get Kaisa? Maybe the enemy team picks Kaisa. Who do you recommend into Kaisa? You think something aggressive like Lucian? If you're going into Kaisa, yeah, Lucian would. I think Lucian could be a good matchup there. Um, you both have a dash. You uh, Lucian deals a lot of damage. Um, I think in that matchup, it would also depend on what their support is, mm-hmm. right? Because that plays a big variable into it. Um, I would definitely learn to like playing Ezreal yes. uh, because Ezreal in solo queue, if you can be patient until you get your first item, then um, you can definitely make a difference in team fights uh, at the Dragon. Um, but honestly, like, I have no shame in doing this uh, live. So we're just going to go Kaisa counters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild Rift, right? So it's that easy. Ranked boost is the first thing that pops up. The last time they updated was this year, uh, 2021. Kaisa is weak against Varus, Jinx, Mm. and Draven. Yep. Uh, and actually, I forgot about that. Yeah, Jinx uh, is really good against Kaisa early game yep. because she doesn't ha- she doesn't have to rely on being so patient. Jinx can get one or two items, and uh, after she gets a kill or two kills, that pretty much that's that's the rest of your lane right there. Uh, Varus would be a good option. I could see Varus working there because he can immobilize Kaisa uh, with his. Uh, ultimate he also has his q uh to just poke her back early game and then draven um with a draven matchup is an interesting one because 
I think that would also de- I think that's the one where it would depend a lot on what your support is yep. because Draven can just shove as hard as Kaisok can with her Q, but he doesn't he's not reliant on the spells. He's he's just high attack damage yes. and he's just poke you out of lane, shove you up against turret. Um but I think uh under like like I said, understanding what the champion you're playing up against and understanding uh if if you are so comfortable picking Kaisa all the time, you need to be really good at the counter for Kaisa. Yeah, that makes like, sense sense. Anytime I see a Lulu, I pick I usually pick Nami or Braum. Mm. Like no Lulu can't do anything against those two champions. Um and if I'm playing Lulu and I see a Nami, I assume that that person knows that Nami counters Lulu in lane. Because a lot of in solo queue, you just need to win lane. You just need to win lane. You win lane, you, you have a higher chance of winning the game. That sounds kind of redundant, but it's true. Well, I mean, that's the old, that old saying, win lane, win game. So Yeah. Um, with that being said, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. Thanks for coming on, Bonds. <laughs> And uh, hopefully this helps, buddy. We'll see you on the...